Uh, dear colleagues, so the problem and the topic is uh, quite um, uh, difficult uh, because of the events um, in uh, the scientific field where we study the efficacy and the um, safety of uh, treatment for the cervical uh, cancer patients. We're talking about the um, uh, early uh, stages, uh, 1A, 1B, uh, 1 and 2A1. And surgery shows good survival results for these patients. We have been discussing uh, the um, access uh, available to this treatment. And if we take the minimal invasive access, then this is the methodology that quite recently appeared. and. Uh, uh, since the beginning of the 1990s until now, it is being widely discussed, and the results of the application of this technology are being widely discussed. If we look at the publications uh, that were made uh, prior to 2018, then we can see that the major meta-analysis, the different studies, demonstrated good results uh, of the use of the laparoscopy in the surgery of uh, cervical cancer. And uh, these um, studies um, uh, turned into the major factors uh, in many uh, clinical recommendations. There appeared once uh, uh, focused on uh, laparoscopy for the patients with early stages of cervical cancer. All this uh, was typical uh, to the period of time up to 2018. In 2018, there appeared the first uh, randomized trial uh, which demonstrated worse results of the use of the low invasive um, access uh, to cervical cancer treatment. This particular trial was extensively used and uh, uh, numerous uh, conferences and uh, TAO forum last year uh, were when uh, we discussed the um, possibilities and the advantages and the disadvantages of this particular methodology and this study. If we look at our data, uh, we can say that uh, since 2012, we have been using the category of low invasive uh, um, um, in, um, 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 uh, approach uh, with these patients, and uh, there are 127 patients, and we're um, um, keeping these patients under control. They, we monitor their status. And if we speak about the indications for this particular surgical intervention, first of all, we pay attention to the criteria of the inclusion of patients into this group. And uh, these are patients uh, with uh, relatively positive prognosis, uh, early stages, and um, with tumors up to two centimeters. Now, uh, uh, th these are our patients, mostly patients with uh, um, flat cell carcinomas, uh, the first uh, 1B1 one one, uh, uh, stage uh, up to two centimeters. And uh, these indicators are uh, comparable um, uh, with the criteria published in the LAC um, uh, trial results. We use the standard set of uh, instruments, and uh, um, we use uh, the standard um, points for the um, use of um, manipulators, and in, at our clinic, we use the uterine manipulator for this particular procedure. And the standard um, technologies and techniques uh, for the uh, surgery intrafascial um, uh, dissection method, which makes it possible uh, to define uh, those criteria and those limits and boundaries for resection that are appropriate for the um, radical debulking. And uh, this is quite a, a complex uh, problem. We go step by step. Uh, there are three major steps. First of all, uh, lymphadenectomy is carried out with the purpose of uh, um, uh, uh, staging uh, the disease, then dissection of intrafacial spaces, 
and this makes it possible for us to define the boundaries of the parametrectomy and uh, uh, radical hysterectomy. That is the next stage. As to the effectiveness of the methods, one of the methods is uh, their uh, histological, pathomorphological examination of uh, their uh, specimen. If we look at the results, the results uh, that we have now in our clinic, we see patients with their uh, favorable outcomes, even despite uh, the criteria selection for this operation. I'd like to point out that the patients with the small tumors, it's a quite complicated disease. And 12 percentage of patients, we see the involvement in the disease lymph nodes. If we look at the results of our, that we have now, Progression-free survival of our patients amounts to 94.5%. If we look at the published data with the similar time of follow-up, uh, the LEG study, uh, they uh, uh, account for 86%. Maybe this comparison is not completely correct, but in my talk, uh, uh, we'd like to show the results uh, that we have now. When we discussed these results, everybody noticed uh, that the percentage of patients who received in our clinic, apart from the surgery, neoadjuval treatment, uh, we uh, use uh, the criteria that are basic ones. First of all, it's uh, uh, vascular invasion, morphological type of tumor, and undoubtedly the changes in the lip nodes. All in all, it's how our progression-free survival looks like 4.5 years. We analyzed our results. Today, we registered three relapses. It amounts to 5% if we are talking about our center. And patients now they are receiving an additional treatment. Today it's important to analyze the reasons for failures of the laparoscopic surgery. Here I'd like to speak about some details. Of course, it's a difficult, complicated surgery. It's not widely spread. Uh, and uh, in our foreign colleagues as well, in foreign countries and uh, in Russia, to go this way similarly and to randomize surgeons is a very difficult ta task. Let's look at uh, the learning curve for a minimally invasive surgeon to be capable of performing more than 23 operations per year. Today, there are studies that show that if in the clinics surgeons perform more than 30 operations per year, the oncological results for patients, uh, they are improving. The indications, indications are very important. Uh, we don't consider exophytic tumor patients even if the tumor size is not more than two centimeters. Uh, we are very cautious uh, and we do thoroughly preoperative examinations. To each patient, we uh, use MRI with enhancement. It's our protocol of inclusion uh, based uh, on the stromal changes in the cervix. And on the basis of this, so we decide uh, uh, to go invasively or non-invasively. The size of tumors, although the recent publications, uh, they discuss are the results of treatment all the same. The size of tumors, so they define the oncological results. 
are tumors more than two centimeters, uh, they deteriorate uh, the prognosis for these patients. Quite recently, our Chinese colleagues published uh, the data, the results of treatment of patients suffering from cervical cancer with the size uh, less than more than two centimeters. Uh, they compared uh, minimally invasive group and uh, overall survival rate. Today, widely, the question has been discussed. The technical aspects of the laparoscopic surgery in patients uh, uh, suffering from vagina, uh, cervical cancer, uh, the use of colpotomy and uh, uterus manipulator have been discussed. The publication by Professor Kerle showed the negative influence on the oncological results of the use of a colpotomy and a uteral, uh, man, uterus manipulator. We should point out uh, that uh, this phase of the surgery, at some extent, restricts uh, the use of uh, the total a radical laparoscopic surgery in this uh, group of patients. There are publications uh, that show about uh, a negative uh, impact of the CO2 on the progression rate uh, of um, after laparoscopic surgery. Discussion has been for going on as to the use of the manipulator into the uterus. I haven't seen any uh, publications uh, that objectively uh, showed uh, the advantages and disadvantages. Of course, uh, this point is a restriction as well. Uh, as to uh, indications for laparoscopic surgery. The ideal patient is patients with an invasive, uh, invasive cancer uh, after coning. Of course, it's important to, to use uh, a proper uh, surgical instruments. Next important point. It's uh, the advancement of the disease, namely the detection of the involvement of uh, the lymph nodes. Today, for patients with the minimal tumors, uh, the uh, frequency rate of lymph nodes of the parametrium involvement ra ranging from 2 to 5 percent. Our Chinese colleagues presented the results and placed notice for patients with the tumors less than 2 centimeters. The involvement rate of the lymph nodes uh, amounts to approximately 6 percent. In our hospital, we use uh, the methods for detection of the signal sentinel lymph nodes. SLN, uh, stromal injection into the cervix of the um, dye. Uh, then in, we detect the first uh, sentinel lymph nodes. We do the biopsy, and then intraoperatively, we receive the information about the condition of the lymph nodes. That defines our following tactics of the treatment of the patient. These are the data. These are our data. They are published. Patients from the tumor size from 2 to 4 centimeters, so the uh, lymph nodes uh, are involved in nearly 14 percent of cases. If you are talking about uh, the trial that uh, is very important for all the surgeons, it's not the step back from my point of view. It's a step to the future because uh, this trial allows us to look differently at uh, the surgery of uh, the cervical cancer and to think about whether or not it's justifiable to use uh, this method. For many surgical societies, for our Russian society, uh, we use uh, the standardized approach uh, for the radical hysterectomy uh, open approach. Uh, recent trials that uh, 
came out, they showed a good effect, effect, uh, efficiency of these uh, methods for patients suffering from the cervical cancer, cervical cancer. And I think uh, that for the federal centers, this method should be one of the areas for research. Uh, we shall uh, continue st studying the effectiveness and applicability application of this method. In conclusion, I'd like to say that we can't recommend to, to use laparoscopic approach to treat uh, these uh, patients, but on the other hand, from my point of view, lapar laparoscopy, it's not just an approach, it's a strategy first and foremost for treatment patients suffering from the cervical cancer. And I'd like to remind you the Galileo words uh, uh, who were standing in front of the Roman Inquisition saying that it does rotates.